<laughs> Hi there. As requested from a lot of you guys in the Flames of War Facebook group, I've um, I've done this tutorial on the uh, on the Tiger Tank that you may have seen in the group. It's a uh, quite fun camo scheme from from Normandy in, in World War II, uh, specifically from the Schwere Panzerabteilung SS 102. And um, it's a it's a very fun camo scheme that I'm gonna do in several parts because it's quite elaborate. So let's jump into this. I'm actually, as you can see, already working on it. The model has been painted black as a base coat and then tank brown. And what you can see me doing right now is I'm using red leather to build uh, the highlights on all the edges. And uh, that's a very fun process of working with the model and turning it around and and uh, putting all the, 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 the light paint on all the edges. Very fun. So what I'm doing right now is is another fun technique called modulation where I'm masking off uh, sections of the model and uh, laying down paint to get a very sharp edge between the dark and the light areas basically. It looks quite striking especially when playing with the model on, on the tabletop you can really easily see uh, the highlights which looks good I think. Obviously uh, a painting technique like this is not realistic um, and that's not the purpose of uh, this painting tutorial to, to teach you how to do realistic lighting. Uh, it's not something that I know a lot about basically. When I paint, I basically try to paint stuff that I think looks fun and looks good and uh, will look good on the tabletop also. I also like enjoying the fact that I, I have an airbrush that can do a lot of fun stuff with uh, transitions and different effects that can look good. So um, what I'm doing right now is I'm reinforcing the highlights. Basically what you're, what you're watching right now is a four times speed of my 30 minute session that I basically spent on, on the model. Again using a business card to to mask off a certain section is a nice little technique to uh, avoid overspray. Now on to the turret where I'm gonna be doing the, the modulation again. First the edges, moving around the model a couple of times. And um, once I've done that you'll see me pull out my masking tape again and, um, and there's, a, there's a definite technique to that to, that will make it easier for you. Basically my advice would be for you to start from the bottom of the model and then work your way up so that you don't have to put tape on top of the sections that, you, that you've just painted because that will definitely tear it off. Uh, it takes a while for this paint to dry especially because I paint very thin almost watery consistency, consistency excuse me. and uh, for those who want to get really technical I'm painting most of my stuff at uh, 20 to 25 psi on my compressor and I'm basically only using water as a, uh, as a way of diluting the, the paint. I have uh, flow improver also and thinner but uh, with as my skill has improved over the years I found that I'm, I work much quicker just painting with very thin paint and being patient and, um, and that's basically it I'm not gonna advise you to not buy these products I'm just saying that you don't have to buy them if uh, you just stay patient and, and and teach yourself how to work with water. That will do fine. Yep. So I used the masking tape to to move move away up the barrel, putting in some more paint, 
and uh, again reinforcing the highlights I have to apologize for any noise uh, that may be in the background that's due to some roadworks that's going on outside my door basically and uh, they're gonna be working here for the next 6 to 12 months so um, I apologize for that again uh, moving around the model and um, that's basically it I think I'm pretty much done right now with the basic paint scheme of the factory brown red brown I should say cleaning the airbrush Yep, and then, uh, well, I'm not done, excuse me. What I'm doing right now is I wasn't happy with the, the, first, uh, the first section, so I'm actually uh, going back to the tank brown to reinforce the contrast. You can do that quite easily if you have made any mistakes uh, along your way. Just go back to the previous color and, and do a reverse mask and, uh, and work your way back. It's very easy to do, obviously it takes time, but uh, if you enjoy painting like I do, uh, that's really no... nothing to say against it, in my opinion. Uh, what will happen to the model is all the transitions will just go uh, much nicer, because you will clean up some of the overspray, and if there's a little graining that you don't like, like a dusty kind of effect where you can see some of the pigments you can clean that up quite easily by just doing a second pass and uh, in reality I'll be moving back and forth between colors like that quite a lot this video is quite short in that I, I tried to make it short to seven or eight minutes but obviously being four times speed it's a um, it's a result of, of of a 30 minute session again using the, the business card and masking off and reinforcing the contrast making the model look good before I destroy it <laughs> with the next section that's gonna be even more fun where I'm gonna I'm gonna use some uh, some masking liquid from green stuff world and I'm gonna lay down some of the uh, the other colors, basically the uh, the green, and I may even also put down the yellow, but that will I'm gonna do that using a paintbrush, not the airbrush. And again, I wasn't happy. I made a mistake with the uh, with the tank brown, so I had to put in some red leather again and go back and fix the mistake. All right, now I'm done. This is the end product of the factory brown from different angles. Hope you can see everything that you need to see. And obviously, as you can see, everything is sub-assembled. Uh, it's much quicker to work on a model and to get it done by not attaching the tracks until the end. It's just the way I prefer to work. Um, so, so there you have it. Thanks a lot, guys. See you next time.